सरे नहीं जो विसारी जो गल चरण सोल चिन्ह जेह नजर समीपे रहो अमारी एह नजर समीपे रहो अमारी एह गणेशा महाराज ने जे हरि कृष्ण महाराज ने जे स्वामी नारायण भगवान ने जे सुप्रीम ओमाइडी our beloved Gansham Maharaj, the path maker to our liberation, our utmost dear Puja Guruji, Puja Santo and all the Bhaktos, Jai Swami Narayan. Last week was Yoga Course 2, and this week is a bye week. So today we'll take a topic regarding something that each and every individual as a satsangi needs in order to progress in satsang spiritually and to attain the rajipo of everyone this is such a topic that if one implies or implements into their life in a practical manner then one would be able to gain the fruits of satsang as they are Today's topic is regarding seva, but just not seva, but how to do seva and what is considered to be proper seva in the eyes of Maharaj and what is considered to be unproper seva in the eyes of Maharaj according to the Vachnamru. We're going to look into a charitra that Sriji Maharaj actually narrates himself in the Gadda first chapter, 10th Vachnamru today. So before we do that, there's two Vachnamru references that Sriji Maharaj himself has said that off of that we'll be able to understand and get a better scope on this very topic. According to the Vachnamru Gadda middle chapter 25, Bhagwan Swaminarayan states that there is a question asked by Sadhguru Muktan Swami, if one has such a strong worldly desire and wishes to eradicate them, by what means can they be eradicated? Sriji Maharaj replied, Just as Ukakachar has become addicted to serving the sadhus, in the same way, if one becomes addicted to serving God and his son, to the extent that one would not be able to stay for even a moment, without serving them, then all of the impure desires in one's andakaran will be destroyed. Nonetheless, Bhagwan Swaminarayan states in the Vachnamrut Gadada middle chapter 28, I, became, I become extremely pleased with one who menially serves the devotees of God. I desire to serve only devotees of God in this life and all the other lives. Now, Going off of these two Vachnamrut references that Bhagwan Swami Narayan narrates, we have to take practically, we have to take practical glances in the lives of the Ekantik Satpurush, Santos and Bhaktos that we have received here in this satsang. Puja Guruji's life revolves around serving, but not only that, but serving without any kind of selfish motive and adjusting to each and every individual's needs. That kind of seva is the top most seva that one can perform. And from that, Bhagwan becomes extremely pleased. Nonetheless, here, by the grace of our Puja Guruji, our divine santos at Luedam Parivad here, may it be the United States here in New Jersey, may it be in Florida, or may it be in India, all over the other centers. Our Puja Guruji's vision, our Puja Guruji's perspective to mold and create santos that are dedicated to serve satsang without any kind of selfish motive and also to serve satsang in such a perspective that Bhagwan would become happy is one of a kind. If we look on this earth, 
approximately 8 billion in population. Narrowing the numbers down, out of them, how many Hindus are there? Approximately 1.5 billion are Hindus. From there, boiling it down even more, out of these Hindus, how many are Swaminarayan followers? I want to put the uh, all around the world, let's put a limit of about approximately 100 million. Saying that, inside of the Swaminarayan Sampraday, how many Santos are there in total? Let's say approximately 5,000. Out of these 5,000 Santos, our Puja Guruji has created such santos which are one of a kind in which way well number one such kind of dedicated selfless service in society may it be from performing festivals or may it be from helping the poor currently right now in the city of Vadodara, even in maybe this covid period for the past eight or nine years in the member in the remembrance of our Pujadada Guruji. Puja Guruji has started a Sadavrat or we can say an alms house um, which is on wheels um, and it's a it's a truck where it goes around the city of Vadodara and provides and distributes food to those who are in need. Nonetheless, when such kind of calamities occur as floods or earthquakes, so on and so forth, Puja Guruji at first goes and wants to help out as much as possible for those who are needed nonetheless not calamities but just in general puja guruji has been uh serving uh, as uh, you can say a guidance for all those bhaktos in society but having even seven institutions one of them being actually a gurukul or a school institution, all boys. Puja Guruji has currently, constantly been helping those who need a free education by providing them a free education without any cost. Such kind of selfish, selfish service is one of a kind and due to that selfish service in society, those who are in contact are very very happy and very very pleased now this is one form of service that our puja guruji and santos here at loyadam parivar are displaying but there's also another side as many santos say um, that i've heard in katha that there's two sides to uh, every coin uh, i showed you a positive side but the other side uh, of service that Bhagwan Swami Narayan actually narrates in his Vachnamrut. Out of the 262 Vachnamruts, Bhagwan Swami Narayan narrates in Gadada, first chapter, 10th Vachnamrut. The story of Sevakram and him being as Nilkan Verni and completely going through uh, such a period where Bhagwan himself had to go through such kind of hardship that we would like to actually uh, listen to today. So today's story is on Sevakram. The title is called Serving Sevakram. And I'd like to read you exactly from the Vachnamrut Gadara, first chapter 10. And we'd like to analyze uh, what went wrong, what not to do, how not to do this Seva, and what would be the ideal way to do Seva so that Bhagwan and his Ekantik Satpurush would be pleased. Swami Narayan Hare. At the age of 11, Gansha Maharaj left his home. Some people began to call him Nilkan Verni. During his travels, he came upon a sick old sadhu named Sevakram. Nilkan Verni served Sevakram with devotion, and Maharaj describes this incident in the Vajnarut Kadira, 1st chapter, 10th. Now this is Maharaj narrating his own practical incident. Once, when I was traveling from Venkatri to Setuban Rameshwar, I encountered a sadhu by the name of Sevakram. He had 
he had studied the Srimad Bhagavad and other Puranas. But it so happened that during his journey, he fell ill. So this sadhu was educated. That Maharaj himself encountered, he was an educated sadhu. But what had happened was, while Maharaj was traveling, he had a subhav of traveling alone as Nokan Verni. Nokan Verni's very, very base nature was to travel alone without any kind of materialistic items. But he met this sadhu on the way there. This sadhu was educated, he was well learned, he had a nice nature. But let's see what happens. But it so happened that during his journey, he fell ill, meaning the sadhu. He had a thousand rupees worth of gold coins with him. But since he had no one to nurse him, he began to cry. Well, in that time, there were many types of sadhus, just to clarify it. According to Bhagwan Swaminarayan standards, after Bhagwan Swaminarayan instilled the Swaminarayan Sampradaya in this world, he had two main, you can say, rules for sadhus. One was to not have any kind of uh, contact anyway so with the opposite gender. And the second was to not have or carry any form of money currency, property, so on and so forth. Bhagwan Swaminarayan actually instilled these rules after coming into the Sampradaya, creating the Sampradaya itself. But before that, and even till this day right now, outside of the Swaminarayan Sampradaya, there is many, many sadhus that do keep money uh, and they live their own life, um, who follow different gods and deities. But this was one of these kinds of sadhus who had um, thousand uh, rupees worth of gold with him but since he fell ill he began to cry he began to cry because he had no one to nurse him no one to take care of him now Bhagwan Swaminarayan number one uh, states in the Vachramrup for us devotees I'm talking about not pertaining to this particular story is that one who has faith in God and a sadhu even if one fell ill to the most extent, extent, he would never think that why is no one coming to cater after me, nurse after me. That's one of the characteristics Bhagwan Swaminarayan states. And I'm reminded of our Puja Yogi Swami. In 2014, a tragic incident or accident we can say happened in his life where he actually was burnt 70% uh, third degree and it was so devastating that his skin turned black it was completely horrific yet he went to the hospital and lived in the hospital for one month under very very precautious supervision of a doc many many doctors the best doctors our santos were there serving him but not once not even once did Puja Yogi Swami say to Puja Guruji when Guruji came to visit that Guruji, please pray that my health becomes well? Not even once. Now think about it. 70% of your body becoming burned to third degree, which is the worst. And the life expectancy or chances of you surviving are slim to none. And he knows this for a fact. He knows that this is not, he's not in a good situation. Yet, whenever he talked to Puja Guruji on the phone or Santos, or when Puja Guruji himself came there physically to meet him, not even once, not even once, did Yogi Swami say, Pray to Maharaj that my health becomes better. Instead, when many, many high profile Santos came, to the hospital to visit Yogi Swami. Yogi Swami told the Santos, or first the Santos asked, what should I pray for, for you? Many, many Santos asked, other Santos. And Yogi Swami said that pray that my faith in Bhagwan and Puja Guruji grows even more. He did not pray for his own physical health. He did not pray for any kind of other 
any any other kind of uh, you can say object or anything like that showing that his samjhan or understanding was very very top and very very elite so saying that when i read over this and i saw that you know that this sevakram began to cry because he had no one no one had he had no one to nurse him this thought came upon my mind nonetheless continuing on i counseled him saying do not worry about anything i shall serve you nilkandvarni's nature as explained here in the vachanamrit gadada middle chapter 28th maharaj himself states that i have a desire to serve those bhaktos of god day and night this is not even a bhakt of god but bhagwan's compassionate nature proves that he had a very very strong inclination for serving or doing seva on the out- outskirts of the village was a banana grove which had a banyan tree within which a thousand ghosts lived because that sadhu had become extremely ill and was unable to walk any further i felt extreme pity for him I prepared a bed of banana leaves 1 and 1/2 feet high under the banyan tree. Bhagwan himself actually created a bed full of leaves for the sadhu. As the sadhu was suffering from dysentery and was passing blood, I would wash him in a tent tomb. Bhagwan Swami Narayan remember Nokanvarni had no relationship with the sadhu, but due to his compassionate nature This sadhu was passing blood from his backside yet Bhagwan Swami Narayan cleaned him changed his clothing washed his clothes without any kind of selfish motive what is that teaching us that when we come to mandir here and practically we have to sweep the stage vacuum the floor organize the chairs or even you can say serve hari bhaktos there should be no kind of selfish motive meaning is someone looking at me i hope this person looks at me and tells santos or other bhaktos that i've been doing seva look i am here too no kind of you can say expectation for any kind of ego or anything like that proving that nilkanvarni's understanding was the highest and that's the understanding we should have when we come to mandir or even outside continuing on the sadhu would give me enough of his money to buy sugar ghee and grains for himself i would bring the ingredients cook them and then feed him as for myself i would go to the village for my meals meaning this sevakram would give enough money so that you can buy very very sufficient ingredients so you can cook the meal but maharaj had to go for his meals he could not take from whatever he made for sevakram because there wasn't enough on some days when i did not receive any food from the village i had to fast bhagwan did upvasas because he did not receive any food uh and sevakram would not give him any money even if he had a thousand rupees full of gold coins yet not even one gold coin for nokanvarni even after nokanvarni would make his bed change it every day wash his clothes wash sevakram do the smallest of sevas yet nothing for him proving that sevakram had different intentions that bhagwan did not like despite this the sadhu never once said to me i have enough money cook for both of us so that you may dine with me not even once did sevakram say this not even once even after bhagwan did all this what does that show in our life upon coming to mandir or outside of mandir our parents giving us an education serving us in an indirect way giving us some money to buy something buying us clothes nonetheless santos here serving us via different different activities so that we can benefit in satsang 
but we not being grateful and not appreciating their effort is something that Sevakram displayed in this Charitra that Bhagwan Swaminarayan narrated in his Vachnamrut that we should not possess in our life. We should be grateful for the things that we have that our parents, santos and bhaktos have given us because that's the only way Bhagwan will become pleased according to this Vachnamrut. After serving the sadhu for two months in this way, he began to recover. Thereafter, as we walked towards Setuband Rameshwar, he made me carry his belongings weighing one ma mand, meaning 20 kgs. So, the Sevakram had Maharaj carry his 20, 20 uh, kgs of belongings even after he recovered, meaning he was using Maharaj, whereas he would walk with only a rosary in his hand. By then, he was healthy and capable of digesting half a kilogram of ghee. Yet, he would make me carry his load while he walked empty-handed. In actual fact, my nature was such that I would not keep even a handkerchief with me. But respecting him as a sadhu, I walked carrying his belongings weighing 20 kilograms. Although I served that sadhu and helped him, recover, he did not offer me even a single rupee worth of food. Therefore, realizing him to be ungrateful, I abandoned his company. Bhagwan Swaminarayan was the Lord of Lords, the God of Gods, yet he also had to suffer when he came on this earth due to such kind of vile people. Bhagwan Swaminarayan his great Ekantik Satpurush, Santos, Bhaktos also have to suffer when they come on this earth because this world is like this. But saying so, as an obligation, as a devotee of Bhagwan Swami Narayan, a responsibility, may you say, we have to serve Santos and Bhaktos in such a way that we portray gr gratefulness, nonetheless, our sole intention is very pure and just to please them. Bhagwan Swami Narayan is one of a kind and his Ekantik Satpurush is one of a kind. From this, we can understand that there's two types of seva that Bhagwan Swami Narayan expects us to do, wants us to do. One is one that we saw in Gajada Middle Chapter 28 and Gajada Middle Chapter 25. And the other is Gadara 1st chapter 10th, which Bhagwan does not like and which Bhagwan does not want us to portray. So saying this in short, Bhagwan Swami Narayan says again in the Vachramad Gadara middle chapter 28th that I want to serve the devotees of God in this life and all other lives because the only way to please God and His Son is by, per, by, is by serving God and His Son through word, thought, and deed. So this is the Gadara uh, Middle Chapter 28th Vachanrod Statement that we should make a very central point in our life and serve Maharaj and His Ekantik Satpurush and attain Akshardham in this life. Saying this, my humble Jai Swaminarayan.